logo fades into view. New York Association on Independent Living. Thank you to our 2022 webinar series sponsor, Waymo. Thank you everyone for joining us today for um, our April webinar in the 2022 webinar series. Um, we're very happy to welcome uh, Michelle West, um, who some of you may know from uh, our conference. And um, Michelle served in marketing leadership roles uh, within the independent living movement. Um, when she presented at the 2019 National Council on Independent Living's conference on the topic of marketing, uh, person after person told her they didn't have the marketing skills uh, to get the word out about um, the services and programs, let alone um, that SILs even exist. So we're so happy to have um, Michelle West here today to talk about three ways to advertise and promote your center. Um, and we'll, Michelle will also be available to answer questions. Um, and I think we're gonna be taking questions at the end unless you, um, you know, there's something that you really don't understand. Um, and we will be able to see the chat messages um, and we have the Q&A uh, function enabled for questions. Um, and I also wanted to acknowledge and thank our sponsor for this webinar series, Waymo. And I will turn it over to Michelle. Well, hi, everybody. Um, today, we are going to cover advertising. So if um, we're going to go over free advertising, but also so um, a little bit about paid advertising um, so that you have the context of the full entire world of advertising. All right. So first we'll go into what is advertising. Advertising, I took a definition, this image um, on the screen right now is from the Common Language Marketing Dictionary. It's a really good dictionary if you wanna know about anything marketing. Um, and the link is marketing-dictionary.org slash a slash advertising. Um, and the definition is advertising is the placement of announcements and messages in time or space by business firms, nonprofits, government agencies, and inv individuals who seek to inform and or persuade members of a particular target mar market or audience regarding their products, services, organizations, or ideas. So basically it's a way to promote what you do. And I like to make the distinction that it's, especially for centers, it's very important to show the impact in any advertising that you do, that people should know this is the impact we do, this is the benefit to you for um, what our center can do for you. Now this is, a marketing communications chart. Basically, there's marketing and sales and there's marketing communications. As a nonprofit, we generally do marketing communications unless you have any kind of for-profit revenue stream like a home health care agency or um, an ASL interpreter agency, something like that. Um, you would go into marketing and sales, but otherwise, um, we focus mostly on marketing communications. And there's this chart here in the center, it says strategy at the very bottom. And then going up from the bottom to the top, it says branding, marketing, public relations, digital, and internal agency. Those are the five sections of marketing. And then fanning to the left and right is a lot of detail um, about the different sub areas of those marketing sections. So the, the thing why I bring this up is because advertising is a sub area of marketing. It's just one piece of the puzzle. And as we go through this presentation, you'll see this chart again, and we're gonna highlight the different sub areas of different sections that tie into advertising. Because in marketing, you don't ever have just like a standalone ad you usually have brochures and websites and social media channels, things like that. And they all should work together. And we'll go into that a little bit more. But just so you know, advertising is a sub area of marketing and market research is the other sub area of marketing. Um, you should know who you're marketing to before you create an ad. All right, so let's, let's 
let's get some context here about what is advertising. We'll go over advertising principles and strategy. That's what the next slide says. And now we're at another slide. And here, there's a lot of detail on this slide. I'm going to flip through basically what we're seeing are coupons that we got in a mailer. And so, you know, like when you're at home, you get this envelope and it has all these different coupons stuffed in there. And they're for just a hodgepodge of things. So we're not going to be able to see all the detail on this, but I'm just um, going to flip through this and later I'm going to describe what we're seeing on these coupons. But right now, since ads are visual in nature, for the most part, unless you have like a radio ad, then it's audio. Um, we're, we're looking at the visual aspect of this. So I'm going to flip through these coupons and I want you to pay attention. I'm going to flip through sort of fast because when you're at home, you're probably flipping through these coupons very quickly. And I want you just to to do what you would do if you were doing that at home. All right, here we go. All right, now think about what you remember from those. Um, this is something, if you wanna put it in the chat box, um, what is, do you remember any of the coupons that you saw? Any, and basically these coupons are ads, right? So if you wanna write that down in the chat box, write down the coupons you remember. If you remember a company name or maybe a product they were selling. If you remember none of those, you can put that down in, in the chat. All right, we have blue dog food. I wonder, do you have a dog? Is that why? <laughs> Blue Diamond, Tent, Pet Supplies. I remember the savings. Do you mean like percentages? Or like a dollar amount off? None except something about your back baby. That's my favorite one, by the way. 1995, anything that shows discounts, dollars off. Okay. My kind of person. Um, <laughs> I love coupons. All right. So as you can see, it's very interesting that you know people, and this is common. Everybody remembers different things, and it depends on where they're coming from. Myself, I would probably like Colleen notice the discount and dollars off because that's what I'm looking for. Um, and there are other people like if you have a pet, I'd be interested if like Terry, you know has animals, has dogs, because sometimes people will recognize the dog food because they have dogs. So usually there's some kind of interest of what they see in your ad. Ads are given a brief glance, just like we did, and people will catch, as you can see, different things from your ad. Sometimes people will put a whole lot in that ad and they wonder why isn't it effective? It's because people see all these different kinds of things. And it depends on how they're looking at it. Like if they want discount savings or if they already have a pet or maybe they like camping so they notice the tent, things like that. So um, that's why ads, You some I, I always caution um, nonprofits especially to be very mindful and targeted on what ads they do because of this dynamic. Because um, you want there to be a return on investment. All right, so let's go through the coupons. And we're gonna, through these coupons, it's gonna be an example. You're gonna see some principles of what are good ads. All right, the first one is Marcos. It says, our subs are hot. First of all, it's, it's a washed out photo of um, a sub and it looked like that in real person as well. Um, they're actually a pizza place, but I guess they're trying to get subs. Um, this is okay, this ad, because it says our subs are hot. You see that, you see their logo, um, if they have an identity already in their community. If your center is not well known and you have an ad like this and you see your logo as the primary thing that people's eyes go to, then it may not be that effective because they may not know what your logo is and just skim right over it. But if your heading was really clear like this one is, and it says helping people with disabilities build community or something like that, 
then that would be more valuable for you to use in this space than your logo. All right, next one. This one is about, he's a realtor. Um, it's a hodgepodge of stuff, so much detail. But he says, I'll list, your, list and sell your home for 6%, crossed out 4%. That's what I see. But he also has a little heart by his picture that says, save on great foods, the other side. It, it's too much. There's COVID, we're open. There's the real realtor logo on there. There's a picture of him. There's a quote. Um, there's a box that says 4% for details. There's just so much. He needs one call to action on something this small that's only going to get him a glance. So same with any ad you put anywhere, whether it be on Facebook um, or in print. This one, shop from home, it says shop from home, it's all red. It has three different logos of companies with the discounts they're offering. I have no idea what this is. I, I don't know how they're tied together. Um, if I don't know these logos, these companies, um, like it's Naked Wines, Purple and Cozy Earth. You know, I've only heard of one of those. And so, yeah, there's, there's, there's too much going on here. Again, one call to action in an, in an ad. This is a beautiful ad, in my opinion, Safeway. I know Safeway, most people know Safeway. So if you don't have that identity in your community with an ad, again, your logo shouldn't be prominent or the first thing, but it says 20% off your first online order. And then it has words that mirror that call to action. Order online, we'll bring the groceries to your car. It's redundant, that is good because we just want one call to action. And if your eye goes to the circle, which by the way, with ads, eyes, human nature, um, statistically, eyes will go to the circle first or to a photo where eyes are looking at you. If a person's eyes are looking at you, that's where the eyes will go first. Um, but it, they're, they're catching both audiences. People who want more text are gonna look at order online. They're gonna get the message. Those who look at more of the circle and the dollar amount, they're gonna get the same message. Love this ad, really well done. All right, Maggie's Farm is, I'm in Colorado, so this is a pot ad <laughs> for marijuana. You wouldn't know that. All it is is a logo, Maggie's Farm, and it says from our farm to euphoria. I, if I didn't know that, I, I wouldn't know what this is, not good. Um, this is way too busy. Again, it says protect pets and family from killer radon, then it has like, like a yellow box with a lot of bulleted list and the price and radon kills one person every 25 minutes. Another box that has pets, fur friends, society, nonprofit, adopt a shelter pet. What? Wait, we're talking about radon. Like, no, too much, too much. And it doesn't have one call to action. Fantastic Sam's has a picture of a couple with their kids. Um, it says men's haircut, it has prices, but if I'm only giving this a second look, which is what ads get, then I, I, just, I see prices. If I don't know what Fantastic Sam's is, I don't know that it's haircuts. I see a family. So for a one second glance, not that effective. This one, someone had said they, they remembered seeing your baby, your back baby. This one, I love this one because it's sort of like, what is it? And it draws me in, has the eyes again. People look at eyes, very clean, very succinct. If I see your back baby plus chiropractic, it's telling me this is the impact we're gonna give you. You're gonna be back, you're gonna be smiling. Beautifully done. This is for your, um, for your center, if you ever do an ad, something this succinct is really good. It's telling, it's showing the story. It's not telling you, we're going to make you feel better. Really? Or are you, you know, it's, this is showing instead of telling. And that's another thing with advertising that you want to do is show, not tell. All right. Here's the pet one, blue diamond pet food. Um, I personally don't like this because it's just got bags of um, pet food, the only one I know that would be a, maybe a pet, but it looks like a wild animal on it, like a mountain lion or something. And um, for a second glance, it's too much. And it's, it's not clear what it is. I'd rather have a picture of someone with their pets and their pets, you know, running to get their food and happy, you know, wagging tail, something like that. That would tell me better. All right. And this one, Sam's Club with a tent. Um, 
you know, we know Sam's Club, so they have a lot of capital. That's the one thing with advertising. When you're a center and you haven't advertised before, you have to realize if you don't have the brand identity in your community, then you cannot rely on your logo. You can't rely on um, a design element, which Sam's Club is those two arrows facing away from each other. Um, you can't rely on those things to communicate really anything in your ad. Um, and so this one's, of course, Sam's Club can put anything on there and people know what it is. So they have an advantage. All right, so those are some advertising principles um, on creating an ad so you know what's effective. Now, let's go into one more principle on advertising. And this is actually a principle for all of marketing. It's really, really important to understand this. It's, it's called the seven touches. Some people say we're up to 13 touches. And what it is, there's an image here. It says the seven touches and it defines what that is. Person internalizes and or acts upon your call to action. These touches are delivered over a period of time. And then there are some hexagons and they have pictures or they have words in them. And we're gonna go through what examples of the seven touches are. One is a picture of someone presenting. That could be a touch. That is actually, um, could be considered a free form of advertising and it's presentations. If you go to a Rotary Club, a Sertoma meeting, something like that in your community, and you present about, let's say, disability awareness, or you present about service animals, you are actually advertising what your center does through a presentation. And that's one touch. People have heard your name. And I actually love that the most because one, it's free, and two, you have someone's undivided attention for maybe 15, 30, 60 minutes versus that ad, like you saw with the ads, that was like one second in a hodgepodge of other stuff. Presentations are a powerful way to advertise. All right, next thing, it says seeing or hearing an ad, like we saw, you could see it in the coupons or you could hear it on the radio. Next one is, is a professional referral. Let's say DVR works with some of your consumers and they say, hey, you should really go to this center because they can do X, Y, and Z for you. That's a touch. And then there's a picture of a lady on a smartphone. That could be your website. That's a touch or a social media channel. Search results and reviews um, can be another touch. If you are not monitoring your Google My Business account, then I would really highly suggest you do that. That is That could be seen as another free way of advertising. And basically you search Google My Business. If you have not claimed your business on Google, My Bu on Google, then that's what you would do. You would claim your business and then you would make a profile for your center. And then um, you'd, you can have photos, your address, your operating hours, things like that. And people will put reviews on there but you wanna make sure you monitor those reviews so you can respond back to any negative ones and keep track of what's going on there. Um, that's the same with Yelp. Yelp and Google My Business are the two big ones um, that I suggest people follow because those are the ones that get the most reviews. Um, but that's a touch. If people read a review about your center online, that's a touch. That's gonna to have an impact on them. The sixth one, is a group of people meeting at a table. That could be someone who's um, meeting with someone and they just have friends tell them about, you know, like here's there's some youth and say you have a youth transitions program and he has a friend who, who got, you know, some services through that program, then that's a touch. And then the last one is, it's a professional setting with a lady talking to a man um, in business attire. And that one could be something like a community influencer, someone who, or a, we call them brand ambassadors, people in the community who really love your center and they're out there telling people about what you do. So those are all just examples of the seven touches, but what the principle is, is that it takes seven touches or ads before your, your consumer might come to you. Some of these have more weight than others. 
a personal referral, like, you know, the youth transitions example, his peers telling him, hey, I've struggled with what you're struggling with, this place helped me, that can drop down the amount of touches. But if they're just seeing like a coupon ad like this, uh, like what we looked at, and they're seeing, you know, more things like that, a bus bench or a billboard, those, those are more likely to take so in touches. It's important to know this because as you're doing, as you're investing in all these advertising opportunities, paid or free, just so you know, why isn't, you know, if you're thinking, wow, we have all these billboards up, we're spending tons of money, why isn't it impacting our, you know, number of consumers coming in? Well, it's because it takes seven touches. So you might want to focus more on the word of mouth and the reviews. All right. Advertising strategy. Um, these are some of the questions that you're going to, that you would think about if you're thinking about advertising free or paid either way. These are the things that we need to think through before we actually invest in the time, because those, some of these strategies we're going to get into later, some of these ways to advertise are free. They take time from your staff and the learning curve sometimes can take some investment of money or time for them to learn online. All right, anytime you're gonna um, advertise anywhere, you wanna know who your audience is. For us, that's easy. We know it's people with disabilities, but let's say you have an older individuals with blindness program. You're honing in to a subsection of that audience. People with disabilities have subsections, right? So we have the cognitive disabilities, we have the visual, we have deaf and hard of hearing. And so we have physical and, and a mental. And so knowing what which group the people are in, if you're really targeting like an OIB program, then you're gonna just think about, okay, these are for people who have low vision or, or experiencing blindness. And so um, I'm not gonna do a visual ad, radio maybe, or I might go and do an audio file somewhere. And I'm gonna make sure that it's, of course, everything should be screen reader accessible, but you're going to really make sure and test that well. All right, next is what do you want them to do? Sometimes people, that's the show versus tell. You can tell people in an ad, hey, come here, we're going to help you. That doesn't, no. You want, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to come and get services? That's one thing, but you also want them to come and do what? Grow? You want them maybe to access employment services. What, you know, what is it that you want them to do? And that's what the ad should, should say. It shouldn't say, we can help you. It should say, you know, what you want them to do, the impact you want to make in their lives. And that's what your value proposition will be, is what you want them to do as a result of this ad. What's your call to action? That's basically your value proposition is this is what we can do for you. Your call to action is now come and call us or email us or come to a peer support group. What budget do you have? Again, for free advertising opportunities, you may not need a budget, but you do need time and you need people. So if you tack this on to somebody's already full plate, then they it may have an impact you don't want in a, in a bad way. They may get burnout um, and they may let other things slip. So if budget is basically is larger than just money. It's also your resources of your people and the time they have. And what type of return do you need? If you're investing money into it, you definitely wanna have some kind of measure to make sure that you're getting that return on investment. But if you're doing like one of the free advertising ways is Google ad grants um, that we're going to go into. And if you do that and you basically can get free search engine review, um, search engine results, and you don't have to pay for it, but you're going to have someone who has to learn how to do it and someone who can monitor it. And so what kind of return do you want from that? Or are you okay with just putting it out there? I would always encourage some type of measurement so you know you're not wasting your time because whatever time they're not spending with consumers they're spending on this and vice versa. All right, and how can you measure that return? 
there are ways usually in marketing to measure everything, though it may not be all inclusive. Um, some things are harder to measure than others. And then what's the best type of advertising? This is again, the older individuals with blindness, you don't wanna do um, a print ad, right? For OIB, um, you'd wanna do something more audio. So that's the kind of thing that, that we need to look at. But also with advertising, is print really the best? Because print, you're, you're a needle in the haystack. Um, I think it's better for you to go out in the community and do presentations on some really well-made trainings and that way you can Q&A, you can dialogue, they have a face to a name, they've heard about you for 15 to 60 minutes um, versus some print ad that just gets lost with everything else. So those are things to think of. All right, so that's, those are the questions on, if you want to do free or paid advertising, you can go back to this list and look at it and just question before you go through what you're doing you know, go through all these um, questions and answer them and it'll give you a better strategy. All right, now we're into the meat of this, that we have the context of what advertising is, what's a good advertisement and how do I even come up with an advertising strategy? Now, here are some ways to actually implement that. All right. Con this is a way to advertise, and it's something that you that every center, every nonprofit, every for profit should be doing, and that's content marketing and repurposing. I'll go into what that is. Let me see. We have a question. Let me see if it's urgent. Oh yes, the recording. Yeah, we're going to post. Um, this will be posted later, so you'll be able to have this content. In answer to Isabel's question. All right. So free advertising. Content marketing and repurposing is this. Remember we had the marketing communications chart. This is everything you can do to market your nonprofit. Now, on this, you will see that we're doing advertising, which is a sub area of marketing, but there are so many other things that you can do. And you might, say you make an ad, and you're, let's again go to, um, let's do youth transitions this time. We're advertising what we do with youth transitions. And we're gonna put an ad, let's say at the local high school. Um, they have a digital board that has, you know, it's like a, a TV screen where they put rotating ads and you can ask them, hey, can you advertise our youth transitions program? We're gonna make an ad for it. You wanna think about your audience. It needs to be something more lively is not well for like a business setting it's going to look more um, designed for youth and so that's again going back to the advertising strategy but with that ad what else do you want to do if people want more information they need something else and so you might now the events sub area of public relations is circled from that ad you might think you know what we need an event i think we're gonna um, like our center we brought parents in with their teens. Um, and then we had a time just for the teens, so we didn't have any hovering. Um, and so we had that event and it was parents could break out to have a parent session, teens could break out to have a teen session. And then they had some vendors there so they could, as you know, a parent and child um, relationship, they could look at the vendors together. Um, that's an event that could back up your ad because you don't want to just have an ad out there that says, hey, look, we have this program. Well, tell me, like, how do I find out about it? That's one idea is you have an event to go with the ad. And then you can also have collateral materials at that event. They're going to need something, a flyer or a brochure, something that they can bring home to remember the salient points that you wanted them to know about your program. And for teens, it might be, you know, you could text them or something, um, it, depending on the age, you know, um, requirements. But you could do things like that. They may not want something in print. Um, website, you're going to want to put, you have that ad at the school, you have this event, you have a flyer, but you're going to want a web page, a landing page. So that on that flyer, you have the landing page or that website address of the information for your youth transitions program, right? Because the parents are going to, I know as a parent, I'm going to type out and look 
look at this program more in depth from this flyer. You might have a blog that has an article that has a testimony from a youth who has gone through this program and says, wow, this is what it did for me. Testimonies are a wonderful way. It's free. It takes time, but it, but it makes sure you have waivers, especially with minors, um, that it's okay to tell their story, but you interview them, you write the story, you post it on your blog, and then you put it on social media. You may put in the flyer, you may put their testimony there. This is all what repurposing is. You're using the same content in different ways. And it's because not everybody consumes information through the same avenues. Social media, like we said, you could put the blog post on social media. Then if you have, like say at the event, you have signed up for our email list. Now you can send out an email every month about the youth transitions program if you're trying to build it. And you may have tips on from your, you know, that, that for the kids and for the parents. And so then you'd put your testimony in the email campaign. You would also mention the event in your email campaign. So you see how all this is just repurposing the same content, but you're doing it in different areas to keep people engaged with you. Donor relations, you could have have some of your donors say, hey, we have this campaign. We want, um, we want to build our youth transitions program and do this event specifically um, for the youth, you know, bring them to this place or something. And um, that's where you go into your donors and you use that testimony again to say, look, this is the impact we're making on youth. Can you join us? So media relations, this is a great thing. Once you learn how to do it, it is a gold mine. Um, in my opinion, as far as building your brand identity and advertising. Media relations, um, it can be paid media where you pay for an ad, or it can be earned media. Earned media is where you build relationships with reporters, editors, anyone who creates and breaks news on TV, news, um, newspapers, magazines, um, and TV, yeah, TV, radio, all those things. And you make relationships with them you tell them about this story. Hey, we're having this event. And this is, Moni, you're repurposing it again. <laughs> and you can see it's going to pay off with the time you're investing on the interviewing and writing it. Um, and then you get that testimony and you say, hey, this person's willing to talk to you, this parent, this child, whatever, um, or youth. And so, so then you go through that. Of course, you have to get the parent and the teen's approval. But um, but it's just a great, great way to, um, to be seen as a credible source and an authority. And then you could, you could go to the Rotary Club and present about your youth transitions program. Um, these are all things that you've invested in the testimony, coming up with the event, um, or just the information on the transitions program, and you can see that you're repurposing it through so many areas. People are, are going to get it because you're doing it through all the different channels that people consume information, but also it's that seven touches again. Look at all this, this is more than, more than seven touches. And so people, by the end of it, they're gonna see be like, wow, I've heard about this forever. I gotta, I gotta try it, I gotta look into it. Podcasts are another way to do this though. Like our library will help do this for free and they have a studio and everything. If you don't have that resource podcast, um, you can get into it, but it's a lot of work for not a lot of return for most centers, depending on where you live. Um, so that, that one's a little iffy for centers. Um, like I worked with a center in Silicon Valley Things like this work for them. Social media works incredibly well for them, but in a rural area, not so much. So you, that's another thing you have to think about in advertising is your audience and what, how they consume their information. Networking, another way you build relationships with community members so they can tell, tell people about you. So like in this instance with the youth transitions event, you would want to network with different um, organizations who, who work with youth who could refer them to you. All right, so we've gone through content marketing and repurposing. That is a principle you can use beyond advertising, but um, it's something specific to, um, these are all, those are all ways to do some free advertising. 
All right, now, public service announcements. This um, PSAs are something that um, you, it depends on the area you're in. So you have to look into it, but you can go to say your PBS station, your radio stations, any TV stations, ask them if they do PSAs or public service announcements. If they do, you can either have, um, ask a marketing agency or a video, um, a videographer, maybe an independent video videographer or a college that teaches videography, you could ask them if their class could do this as their project. And that's, this is all free. Ask them if they could do it pro bono to, for free. And what it is, is they would come up with a video if it's, um, if it's on TV or an audio track, if it's radio. And you basically need to come up with um, what you wanna promote. If you wanna promote your center as a whole, um, that can be hard because it's, you know, that call, of, call to action needs to be really succinct, really succinct, um, because it's a short amount of time. Radio ads can be 15 to 30 seconds, and you, you're supposed to repeat your, your um, center's name um, three times for a 30 second, twice for a 15 second. So it doesn't give you a whole lot of time left. And you want the call to action to be something that people want. Um, it may, if it's really general, then people might just be like, that doesn't apply to me, especially with centers. When you advertise, if you say we help people with disabilities, people may not think they have a disability. This is a really, really important piece to remember. If they um, say someone has acquired their hard of hearing, um, like most of the population will become hard of hearing um, as they enter their senior years. Um, they may not see the, them as having a disability. My mom is one of these. You know, I told her you have a disability, now you can't hear. Um, and she was like, I don't have a disability. Um, and hers is significant loss. And so um, my dad has, is blind in one eye. He doesn't see himself as a disability. He can drive, he grew up with this, but he's legally blind in one eye. Um, so some people don't see themselves in our bucket of people with disabilities. So just know if you advertise something very broadly and you say, we help people with disabilities, a lot of people will think of a handicap sign and they'll think of, I don't use a wheelchair, it's not me. Um, so that's why you want your ad to be very succinct. Now, public service announcements, if you're lucky enough to get like a college class to do this for you or um, an agency to do it pro bono, and the radio station or TV station to put it up for you, it can be very powerful. Um, but know what's involved. You need someone who can do the production for you. And the production is filming. It's set, you can set up the interviews for them. And that's a real benefit. Find the people, set up the interviews. But you'll need someone who knows how to script it, how to shoot it, how to edit it, and then you'll have the agency will know how to post it, um, the TV or radio station. But that's a free way, it's very powerful, and people will see it over and over and over again, and it'll build your brand identity. But it, is, it isn't the easiest thing to get, just so you know, if you look into it, you may find that there aren't really a lot of opportunities for you. One thing that's available for all centers, dot com slash grants in its Google Ad Grants. Basically, Google Ads, people typically pay for them, right? You search in, um, let's say disability services. Someone searches that into Google to, to um, find what the results are. People will pay for ads. They'll pay X amount of money for someone to click on their ad. When you're a nonprofit, you can apply for this. And I haven't known any centers so far who have gotten denied. Um, everyone I know has. And Basically, they give you a credit. Um, last time I looked, it was $4. You can have a search term that's worth up to $4 per click. For centers, most of our um, keyword searches like disability services are not gonna be above $4 because um, those are for like the really, um, the ones that get hit a lot, whereas ours may not. Um, if you do hard of hearing, if you do blinds, things like that, those are not heavily searched. And so they're gonna fall within that $4 range, that zero to, to $3.99 range, right? But 
if let's say like the agency, um, the center I worked for, we have a home health agency, that search home health care is way over $4 per click. Um, and so, cause we have a lot of home health care agencies and most of them are for profit, so they'll pay it. Um, and so for us, it, if you have any search terms that are over $4, like we did, then they will not give you a credit of, of $3.99. Um, you have to pay full price. So it's anything that's under $4. Um, and that's as of when I last looked. So they can change, you know, they change things here and there. So you'd want to look into that. But um, and then they do have, there are a ton of free tutorials on how to learn how to do, how to set up Google Ad Grants. Um, my suggestion is if you have someone who's technically, who's technologically savvy, have them go through all these free trainings that they can find online and they can set up your Google ad grants. So, you know, you basically set up the keywords you want searched and all that. Um, and then they can monitor it. The monitoring takes a whole lot less time than the setup does and you're good to go. If you don't have anyone who's technologically savvy, you could pay someone to set it up for you, a one-time cost. I would not pay someone to monitor it for you. I would ask them to include it in their setup of your Google Ad Grants to include the training of a staff member to monitor it. You'll save a lot of money and they should provide you um, like some notes or either record, like if you did a Zoom training for your staff on how to monitor it, record that so if that person ever leaves who you train, the new person can look at that recording and know how to monitor it. That's how you can do it long-term um, for the cheapest amount of money. All right, next we went into earned media, but let's dive deeper into that because I'm gonna show you why it is so powerful. Um, earned media again is where you get relationships with people who create and break news, re, um, reporters and editors of papers or um, at TV stations, things like that. You have to have those relationships. What I would do is I would reach out to, you know, pick, pick the stations that are more what, um, that maybe your consumers go to. Um, if there's like a TV station that's sort of this niche thing that not many people look at, I would focus on the big ones like CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox, those are the four biggies. And just ask those reporters to, to a coffee. But when you go to the coffee, be prepared. One thing I usually offer to pay, some media outlets don't allow you to, pay, to, to buy their people anything. Um, they see it as conflict of interest, some will. And so, but I offer anyway, it's just a coffee. And, and then what I do is I come prepared with, this is who we are, bring some collateral materials like a brochure, flyer, something like that. Don't inundate them with stuff, give them, you know, be targeted with what you're giving them. But something that will give them a nice overview of what you are. Um, Cause some people come in and give them an annual report and a brochure and all this, all these flyers on programs, it's too much. Um, just give them one thing and then have a story ready for them. Let's take the transitions program again, that example. You would say, you know what? We're coming up with this event. We would love for you to cover it. Um, and they're probably going to want to cover it as it's happening. Um, not, and they might have places on a calendar of events where they can put it. But then you want to ask them um, specifically to come and cover that event, make a story on it. Um, have a couple of stories for them. Like if you have an OIB program where someone did some amazing things and then, then they went into employment services and it tells the story of what you do um, through because they access multiple services, that's showing, not telling. Bring that story to them. And of course you wanna clear it with the person ahead of time that they're okay with the media interviewing them. And I always tell them, I'll be there with you. Um, whoever it is that's, that's referring, like if I, if I know that consumer and I've worked with them, I will tell them I'll be with you because it, it is a little un unnerving for some people to be interviewed by the media, though some people get excited about it. So have those couple of stories, at least two, have the overview of what your center does and tell that to them through the coffee. Again, just like a presentation, those people will remember you. 
a lot of times they'll give you their cell number because email, a lot of them do not look at their email or they get barraged with so much in email, you'll get lost. You want their cell number. That's how you get it. Then um, with earned media, there's also the next bulleted item is angle and pitch. With your stories, the angle main, the angle is basically, you have this story of we have an event, right? You need an angle. You need, why do people care to read about it? Why would the media want to cover it? What is the angle that you're going to present? And it might be that testimony. Hey, this kid, he came to our services and now he's doing this and he's actually going to present at our event and tell people about this program that we do. Um, that's going to be the angle. It's not just we're having an event. There's an angle to it. There's a specific story that should be of interest to um, their readers or their viewers and the reporters themselves. Um, one thing that reporters really like that we centers do really well is they like gaps in services. They love to cover gaps in services. If you say we just do X, Y, and Z, not really appealing to them. But if you say there's a real need out there for this service, because look at this, you know, these people aren't getting the services they need. And this is what's happening as a result. And we're fixing that. They bite on that like crazy. So that's the angle. The pitch is basically how you're going to tell the story and have passion with it. Have your passion for people with disabilities and the, what you're doing to impact their lives come out when you show them, because that's going to make them more excited and they're going to be more willing to um, cover that story. All right, press releases. I think we've all probably have heard of press releases. Um, it's basically has a template that you fill in certain information so that when the press gets it, it's all uniform and they know I look at this place for contact. I look at the first paragraph's going to give me this info, then I'm going to get the body. And that's why you do a press release because they're, they're getting so much that they need to have a template so they know what you know, what they're interested in, they can, they know where to look on that piece of paper for it. Um, press releases. I have found like I worked in Houston um, and in that area, because it's a much bigger market, it's very different. They still operate with press releases to some extent. In Colorado Springs, we're a medium sized city. Um, not so much. You go to coffee, you get their, their cell number. They tell you when you have a story, text it to me and then email me the press release. Sometimes once I got to know them really well, I would just pitch it. They wouldn't care about a press release because they knew I'm going to, whenever they call, I'm going to pick up right away. I'm going, you know, like, and I'm going to follow through with what I say. And then they just want to pitch. So press releases, you need to learn how to do it and you need to have it ready when you pitch. So in case they ask for it, you have it because, um, well, yeah, because you don't want to be like, okay, let me scramble and pull that together for you tomorrow, two days, you know, you want to be able to give it to them. And it's not a waste of time because again, with that content marketing and repurposing, you take that press release, you repurpose it into a newsletter article, you put it into a social media post, you make a web page about it or a blog post, you know, you can use that information. Um, so that's earned media. All right, those are ways to advertise for free. Um, and those are the best ways. Everything else is gonna be paid, but let me show you the impact of media. This is at the Independent Center where I worked. We had a web page that had all of our, this image is a screenshot of our website and it says media coverage archive and it has a list of all of the articles that got covered by the media. And it had links to those articles. Then next to that, to the right, it says media coverage. And those are stories that maybe we couldn't link to um, because the article, sometimes they don't put all articles on their websites or like a TV um, station doesn't always put um, that coverage on their website. And so we would make a story out of it. We put it there in that media coverage column. And so basically, we, when we invest, started investing in earned media, we got coverage from the media more than one time a week. And 
I would keep clippings. They're called clippings. Um, basically, there's an image now of a um, bulletin board. You can't see the bulletin board, but it's covered with newspaper clippings of articles. We have three um, papers. We have a business journal. We have sort of a niche little edgy paper um, that's weekly. And then we have the Gazette, which is your normal big newspaper. Um, and so we would cut out the clippings and put them on there. This is only print. So it's huge, the cover coverage that we got. And by the end of it, um, one of the, the, the business journal, they had an article on nonprofits at the end of the year. And they said, what would our community be without? And they listed three nonprofits and we were one of them. And we are one of the nonprofit capitals of the nation because we have a huge influx of nonprofits in this area. Um, there's one other city that's like that in the nation. We're competing with all those, but I think a lot of it is not, not just the advocacy, we, advocacy, uh, sorry, advocacy that we do um, with our CEO, but it's, it's also the news coverage because then when we would go to community events, people would be like, oh yeah, I've heard of you. It's because we were getting covered more than once a week. So this of all the options that we've covered of, of um, paid opportunities, I, of all these, I would definitely do content marketing and repurposing and the earned media. Google Ad Grants is worth your time to do it. Um, but again, set it up right, because if it's not set up right, what happens is you're, you're not, you don't have the right keywords in, you don't have it set up right for monitoring, you don't know when to change things, then it, it's not worth your time at that point. So, but earned media is really worth it. Okay, those are the free ways. Um, paid, I'm just gonna glance over really, really quickly because I wanna give us time for Q&A and I know the um, focus of this was free, but just um, so you know, print, is considered like newspapers, magazines, directories. If you have any directories, um, like we have some that have all the different nonprofit agencies, you wanna get in that. We have one that has, you know, all the, um, it's, it's a senior blue book it's called. You wanna be in those. And that's actually free sometimes, or it's a minimal cost. Television, radio, outdoor is considered billboards or bus ads. We did those because we had a home health care agency that gave us the revenue to do it. And it actually was well worth um, the investment to pay for radio ads and billboard ads. And we could track that success, the return on investment. This is not something that centers would do unless you have um, a revenue producing arm. And then street is bus ads. And we did that as well. Digital websites and social media. You can do website banner ads, social media ads. Again, social media ads like in Silicon Valley, great. I would not do it in somewhere that's more of like um, a small size city or rural, um, unless you have a huge following for some reason. Um, all right, so let's skip this. This is sort of an example of what we did with paid advertising. Um, we did radio bus shelters, we did earned media. Um, and with paid, one thing I do want to notice, um, make a note of is advertisers can help you like radio stations. They can help you with the production side of it to where you don't have to create the ad. They have that in-house. So do billboards. So some of these you may think, wow, I can't even make the ad. They will help you. And that's part of what you pay for. Oh, but make sure if they don't understand an IL or people with disabilities, that community um, and the IL movement, um, they can recommend certain ads that, that aren't going to communicate. Like if they say, hey, tell people you help people with disabilities. First of all, we don't help. We walk alongside. And second of all, people aren't going to identify that they're, mo a lot of people aren't going to say, I have a disability, but they do. And they can use our services. Um, so they need to understand that. And sometimes they can have a conflict of interest when they build your ad. So um, that's just a little note. All right. So. So that we have time for Q&A, we're going to go through and um, next steps. I would suggest that you look at the advertising strategy questions, um, depending on what you're going to um, pursue with advertising. And just start with one, start with one of these ideas. Um, I think content marketing and repurposing is foundational for all marketing activities. 
get that process down really well, where you're repurposing content all over the place. And then um, I would suggest start with earned media. And once you get success with each one, then you can add maybe Google ad grants, and then you can, you know, add maybe looking for a PSA, things like that. Oh, unless you have like tons of staff who are skilled in marketing, um, I, I think, you, you know, it's better to start with one and build. All right, question and answer time. Michelle, I, I did see that there were yeah. uh, questions in the chat. So Colleen is asking, um, there's specific types of ILC topics that attract the most attention in terms of new consumers, brand value, fundraising, and advocacy. And I, th I think she recognizes it's not a simple question, but yeah, uh, we only have three minutes left. So yeah. Uh, so it really depends on your your audience and your market. Again, I I use this like I worked with a Silicon Valley sill at the same time I was working with a Florida Keys sill. And so different, Florida Keys, vets, very, you know, they have a lot of veterans, they have a senior population, they have a lot of um, disabilities that required later in life, Silicon Valley, and more professionals who, you know, uh, so a lot of them, you know, we had a mix, right, of people who had, had been born with them or acquired them later, it makes a big difference, um, educational level where they are at life. Um, and so I would say it depends on your market. That's why market research is so important to know what do your consumers want? What is the gap in services that they're feeling? Um, and then I hope that answered it. Um, it. It's not really an answer. It's, it's as far as like you have to do market research and see what your consumers need. And, um, and then that's, then a lot of it, is testing with different things, seeing what, what is it that they're responding to. And I always show my ads to consumers and say, does this communicate to you what I want? And I don't tell them what I'm wanting. I just have them tell me, and then I tweak my ad. So it's, you have to do some, some trial and error and some research to get to that answer of what topics are gonna attract the most attention for your center. So we're, we're down to kind of the last minute here. Yep. I, I do want you to skip ahead to the slide. I know Michelle has offered oh, yeah. to do um, free 30 minute consultations uh, for people that are interested. Um, her information's up on the screen right now. Um, and I'm, I have one question, maybe you can answer this quickly. Yeah. QR codes, are they worth it? <laughs> mm. It might be with teens. It depends on what you're promoting and the audience you're promoting it to. And that's sort of the common thing with anything marketing is um, the audience and what you want them to do. If they use QR codes, absolutely. If you're marketing at a restaurant where they have their um, you know, menu where people are used to doing that now, sure. Otherwise, uh, it, it really, yeah, it's, it's more of a niche thing. Okay. But yeah, if you, if you um, have any questions or you're like, you know what, I'm going to go through this um, ad strategy, these questions, and I'm going to, I want to try to do earn media. I'm going to come up with a plan. Um, I'm offering anybody in this presentation a free 30 minute consultation. I would suggest you send me, you know, because it's only 30 minutes, just send me your plan. And then I can, I can give you um, some ideas on it um, or just a, you did an awesome job. Keep doing this. Um, but yeah, please give me a call or email me if, if you're interested in that. Great. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we will be sharing a recording and you will get that. Um, thank y'all. Through the email. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you to our 2022 webinar series sponsor, Waymo. Waymo is an autonomous driving technology company with a mission to make it safe and easy for people and things to get where they're going. We believe that fully autonomous technology holds the promise to improve road safety and offer new mobility options to millions of people. This is why we're designing Waymo Driver, our autonomous technology to give people a new kind of freedom, to go where they want, when they want, while making the frustrations and concerns with driving a thing of the past. Logo fades into view. New York Association on Independent Living.